Hi, this is Jesse Liberty for Telerik. Today we're going to take a look at getting started with the Rad Auto Complete Box. Let's start by creating a new project. We're going to create a WPF application and we will call it Rad Auto Complete Box XamilFlix. When we click OK and Microsoft settles down, we can create a new class. That'll be the first class we're going to create and that will be for our data type which will be song. We'll make our song class public and we will give it two private member variables both of type string. The first will be title and the second will be author. Next we'll create a public property for the title that will have a getter and a setter. The setter is going to check that the value being passed in is not equal to the title we already have. Assuming they are different, then we will set the title to the value passed in. With the getter and setter in place for our title property, we can copy that and create a second public property for the author. We'll update the values in the second property to author and our class is now complete and we can save that. We are now ready to create our data class representing the model that we're going to obtain data presumably from a database or from a data service. Instead we will mock that up using hard-coded data. Our data class will define an observable collection of song and we need to add the necessary using statement so let's drop that down and let IntelliSense add the using statement and we will call that songs and now we're going to give our data class a public method called create songs data and as noted this stands in for obtaining the data from a web service or from a database we'll do that by adding each song manually to the observable collection and we will initialize the song to so the first song that we will initialize will be like a rolling stone and then we will also of course initialize the author which is of course Bob Dylan rather than sitting through watching me add all these songs manually I will drop them in and you can see we have quite a lot of songs so that we can get matches on our search we need an additional public method that's going to return an observable collection of song. We'll call that get songs. And the first thing that's going to do is to clear the observable collection and then to add the data to the observable collection and then to return the observable collection. And that completes our data class. We can save that and we're ready to move on to creating our view model. We'll add a new class called Songs View Model. This is the class that we will be binding to. The first thing we want to do is give this a member of type data, which we will call Source. And we will also give it a private observable collection of song. Let's add that using statement by hitting Control Dot. And we will call that Songs List. And then because we want to be able to bind to this, we're going to make a public property of songs list. However, this one will be read only, so we will give it a getter, but we will not get it, give it a setter. Songs view model also needs a constructor. In the constructor, we will get the collection, in this case from our hard-coded collection, and for each song that we get from that collection, we're going to add that song to the songs list, thus building up the songs list with all of our songs. With the view model in place, we can save that and we can turn now to the view, which is specifically datawindow.xaml. The first thing that we need to do is to create some resources, and the first resource is going to be a style. We'll use this style inside the autocomplete box that we're going to create. We'll call it autocomplete style, and we will set its target type to be text block. 
The style consists of a series of setters. Each setter has a property and a value. The first property we're going to set is the font family, and we'll set the value Sego UI. Then let's copy that and paste a number of properties in place. And we can go back and fill in that the second property is, instead of being font family, is font size. And set its value to 13.333. The third property that we're going to set is the foreground color. And finally, we'll set the vertical alignment, which we will set to center. That completes the style. We now need a data template to describe how we want each entry in the dropdown to appear. Let's give this a key, which will be song search autocomplete. And what our data template is going to describe is a stack panel oriented horizontally so that they will align next to each other with three text blocks. Our first text block is going to bind to the title and we're going to set a style on that text block using the style we just created in the resources section. The autocomplete style. The other two text blocks are going to be nearly identical so let's copy and paste. The second text block won't bind, it's simply going to be a comma and a space to separate the two values and the third will bind to the author. So you'll have title, comma, space, author in each entry. For the next resource, we need to create a namespace. We'll, name, we'll call that local because it's going to refer to this program itself. So we'll set the CLR namespace to rad auto complete box XAMLflix. With that in place, we can use that namespace right away to go find our view model and give that a key. That establishes the view model as a resource that we can refer to, and we're going to use that right away. We'll come down to the grid and set the data context, and we're going to set that to a static resource, and the static resource we're setting it to is the view model that we just declared. Thus, everything within the grid will be able to bind to the view model as the data context. Let's widen the toolbox and come down and find the rad autocomplete box and drag that into our XAML. That will do two things. It'll put the rad autocomplete box into the XAML. It will also add the namespace for Telerik, which you can see at the top line. And we're ready to add properties to the rad autocomplete box. The first property we're going to set is the watermark content. That's what's going to show until the user enters a value. We'll give this a name. We're going to set the text search mode, which you can see is an enumerated constant. We're going to set it to contains, which means as I type values, any song title that contains the letters I type will display. We're going to set the autocomplete mode to suggest. Once again, this is an enumerated constant. We'll set the text search path to title. So it will be the title that we're doing our searching on as we try to match the letters that I type with what's available. The selection mode will be single rather than multiple. And the item source will bind to the songs list property in our view model. For the drop-down item template, we're going to use the data template that we declared earlier in the Windows resources. We can go grab its name and place that right into our static resource. And then we'll do a little bit of housekeeping, setting the vertical alignment and the margin as well as the height. Finally, we'll set the border brush and the border thickness. And with that, we have our autocomplete box ready to go. Notice there's no code behind. Everything is declared in the XAML, and that's all we need to make this work. Let's build the application. It builds successfully. Let's run the application. The autocomplete box comes up. As soon as we type a letter into the autocomplete box, the drop-down displays the title, followed by a comma and a space, and the author of each matching entry. The more we type, the more it narrows down 
the matching song titles. And we can select the title into the autocomplete box. If we back up and remove some of the letters, once again, the matches are going to expand. We can scroll through the available matching songs and we can select one directly into the Rad Autocomplete box. For Telerik, this is Jesse Liberty. Thank you very much for joining me to this introduction to Rad Autocomplete box. I look forward to talking with you very soon.